To access your pop-up settings, go to Forms. And here, if you have one or more pop-ups, you'll be able to access the very basic settings. For example, you can activate your pop-up over here. You can click here and see a preview of your pop-up just as someone would on your website. And you can close it with this X button. You can edit your pop-up. This will go into the builder where you can change the design of your pop-up. With this drop down here, you can rename, duplicate, or delete your pop-up. Here you, of course, see some of the stats. And if you click over here, you can delete your pop-up. Now, if you have more and you want to delete, to delete more of them or all of them, you can just go ahead and click Select All, and then you'll be able to delete them. Here you can sort them by date created by names, subscribers, visitors, conversion, last registration. Here it's by name, here it's by date. And then you can, for example, change the order if you wanted the date to show from oldest to newest. There we go. And of course, you can view more than 25 if you want, for example, 100, change pages. If you have a lot of pop-ups, you will see more pages. So that's basically it. If you want to go into the detailed settings, you just click the name of the pop-up here. And here are all the settings of your pop-up. Of course, you can also access them by going to Forms and creating a new pop-up, giving it a name, clicking Save and Continue, choosing a group for your pop-up, clicking Save and Continue again, choosing a template. I'm going to go with this one here. And here you can just edit your pop-up to your liking. Once you're done, click Next. And here is how you access your settings when building a new pop-up. So you have the behavior settings. This will make the pop-up wait about five seconds before it pops up. So when someone is visiting your website, they wait five seconds, the pop-up shows. You can also have the pop-up show at 50% or 75% or 100% of the scroll length on your page. So once, once someone scrolls to 50%, that's when the pop-up will show or before closing a page. Now this is really cool. It's not intrusive, so they will not have to close the pop-up before, clo before they close the tab. But once your visitors try to go to another tab or close this one, they will get that pop-up. The frequency means that a pop-up will show and it will only show again once your visitor visits the web page after a month. Of course, you can change this to a week, days, and you can change the number over here. You can schedule the pop-up. This is really good if you have an event or a webinar. It will show up, for example, you can set it up to, to show a week before the event, and then the pop-up will not show after the event or on the day of the event. This is really good for cases where, where you don't want to worry about forgetting about that pop-up, so it doesn't show after the event. Then you have the visibility. You can always show, so you can have the show on every single page of your website, or you can hide it on specific pages or you can show it only on specific pages. Now, this is good for pop-ups that are connected with a specific article on your top or a specific topic. For example, if you're if you have a pet store and you're talking about dogs in one of your blog posts and you want a pop-up that is only connected to that dog post, for example, you know, promote a, a promotion for some kind of dog products, well that pop-up will show up and only on that specific page, only on that specific blog post even if you wish. Now, just remember that if you do that, turn off any other pop-ups you might have on that website because no one likes to have like three pop-ups or two pop-ups show up at once on one page. So I would suggest you hide the other pop-up you might have on that specific page. Okay, we're going to go with Always Show. You can also hide them on desktop, on mobile devices, or on tablets if you wish. Otherwise, just go ahead and click Save and Continue again. And here is the code that you need to put on your website. Now, usually every CMS has a place where you can paste this code. Uh, if you're using WordPress, you can use a plugin. If you're using Shopify, we also have a MailerLite app for that. And then you do not need to use this code on your website. But otherwise, please contact your CMS provider or use their help section. They should be able to help you with posting this into your CMS. You only do this once. Once you did do this once, you can create as many forms as you want and you will be able to use them on your website. Once you have pasted this, or you can paste it later, go ahead and click Next. And here is an overview of this specific pop-up. We saw a similar one just a moment ago. So again, you can activate the pop-up here. You can turn off the double opt-in. In this case, these sections here disappear. Let's turn it on again so we see the double opt-in and double opt-in thank you page. The design is here. Again, the preview 
We can close it here. We can edit the design here, the behavior that we just looked at. We can edit it over here. Change the subscribers, the groups over here. And here is that tracking code again. Now, if we want this pop-up to show once someone clicks a specific text or picture, maybe in your article, you, you need to use this here, show pop-up on click event. Just go ahead and read these instructions over here and you should be ready to go. Now, let's look at the ones over here on the top, the, the features here. If you go here, you can edit this pop-up again. This does the same thing as this button over here. You can rename it, duplicate it, or delete it. Then we have the analytics. These numbers will start growing once people start subscribing. Then you can go ahead and export this if you want to a, to a CSV file. Then we have automation. So we can go into automation over here and create an automation and connect it to this form. And then we would see that automation over here or we can do it from here. We can just go ahead and click Create Workflow, and that will create a workflow in your automation section. You can create a whole automation from here, and that will be already automatically connected with this form. Then we have the double opt-in email. Here you can change the subject line, the sender, and of course the email itself. Go ahead and click Edit. And here you have all the template settings, the content settings, and the button settings for all the colors here. You also have blocks, so you can add more things if you wish. But if I were you, I would make this as simple as possible because sometimes what happens is if someone gets a long email, it looks like they, they might feel that they're already subscribed to your newsletter and that they're just getting some information. If they don't get a simple email with just a button to click, they might not click it and they might not subscribe. So you can also, of course, put uh, your freebie here or your free PDF, but just remember until they click this button, they're not going to be subscribed. So if you put your freebie in here, well, they can get that freebie without subscribing. Now let's go ahead and click next. We're back in the double opt-in area. And now let's go to the double opt-in thank you page. Now this is what your subscribers will get after they click the button in the double opt-in email. So you can go ahead also, same thing, edit it here, edit the design over here, use the blocks. Here you can go, you can do more, right? You can put a button, this is the best place where you can put in your PDF file or your freebie just for a simple automation where they subscribe and get something really fast. You don't need to use an automation. You can just go ahead and use this here. Very simple. Link your URL to your PDF in your Dropbox or your Google Drive. You put, it, put the URL here and you're ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and click Next. And if you already have your own page prepared with a PDF file on your page or somewhere else, and you don't want to use this page here. Well, you can use your URL here. And then once they double, once they click the button in the double opt-in email, they will get a link to this page, to your page, whatever it may be. All right, and that's about it. So these are all the settings for the pop-up forms. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please click subscribe, use the little bell icon. You can also catch us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, use the little subscribe link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.